Hey everybody, this is Robert from Black Belt Gaming. I hope you're doing well. Tonight I wanted to talk with you about DC Adventures. Uh, this is a role-playing game. And I'm going to be starting something new on my channel here. My channel is called Black Belt Gaming. And some people think that that's, I'm trying to show, you know, expert gameplay. That's, that's not true. I am literally a black belt. I teach martial arts for a living. And I game. So I am a black belt who games. And sort of sticking with the theme here of my channel, I thought I would consider this a white belt video. Meaning that this is a, a video for beginners. I thought I would go through some of the essentials of this game because I am learning it. And much the way I do my blind playthroughs of different games, uh, this is not exactly a playthrough, but I am learning this game uh, currently. I was uh, interested to take a look at this game. I've had it on my shelf for a while, but after seeing the recent Batman vs. Superman film, uh, I thought I would uh, dig into this one. Uh, while those characters were sort of uh, fresh in my mind. So let's take a look at some of the basics here for this role-playing game, DC Adventures. Well, I thought that one of the best places to start in this white belt video is right here. It's a little over halfway through the book, and it's called DC Adventures Essentials. There are some specific concepts that we need to understand in order to play the game. One of those is rank. Whether it's some ability, skill, or power, it often has a value, a number that you're going to use in order to make your uh, rolls, meaning when you roll your 20-sided uh, die. I believe this is the only die you need to play this game. So Ranks in power or skill can range from evidently minus 5 and go all the way up to 20, which is incredibly strong. So we're going to keep that in mind. And along with rank, I believe there is this something called a power level. And that's another thing that I think is a, a essential, essential to understand. Uh, power level, I guess you could think similar to character level in D&D if you if, if you want to th Dungeons and Dragons if you want to think uh, that the sort of default setting for this game would be level 10 I think maximum level maybe 20 um, those are sort of established uh, superheroes and you're gonna have some that are less and some that are more powerful than that so 10 is a nice average as far as superheroes go. And when we start looking at some character sheets, we can sort of get an idea of how strong they are by what their power level is, in addition to what ranks they may have in different powers and skills. Well, right under rank, we have difficulty class. Every task that requires a die roll is going to have a difficulty class which is basically a target number uh, you need to meet and this is going to be important when you're making different uh, checks and we have that up here at the top on this side when you make a check you roll a 20 sided die you add any appropriate modifiers those may come from your power ranks or uh, there are even modifiers that comes from that come from uh, conditions. For example, if during the storytelling your character has a small advantage, he might get plus two on his roll. If it's a highly beneficial advantage, it may be plus five. And the reverse is true. Something that's uh, distracting maybe a minus two penalty and something that's highly adverse may cause a minus five penalty to the roll. So these this difficulty class and these checks are really the key mechanic here and once again we're going just with the 20 sided uh, die. So let's take a look at some examples of what kind of checks and what kind of difficulty classes we may be encountering. 
Well, here's a nice uh, table here for us. Difficulty class examples. This is perfect for what we're doing. As you're coming up with things, let's say you're running the game and your, your friends are playing the different heroes. And you need to provide them with a target number, a difficulty class for their check. And it could be any situation. And we have a, a variety listed here such as what, what would walking on a tightrope be? Well, that might be a challenging task at 20. So that means we would need to roll the 20-sided die and really we'd have to roll a perfect 20 there if we didn't have any modifiers. But if we could take into account some of our different abilities and skills, maybe even if we have some sort of situational bonus, we might have a much better chance not just a 1 in 20 chance. Some things go beyond even 20 up to heroic, such as uh, overcoming a sophisticated security system requires a result of 30 or higher. So definitely not for uh, your average peeps to do that. And then some things are not so difficult, such as uh, hear a group walking 30 feet away. This is just an average check. A 10. This uh, gives us sort of modifiers here, modified uh, or, or the different skills over here I see. We have listening for people is going to be a perception check. Walking on a tightrope is going to be acrobatics. Uh, overcoming that security system is going to be technology. So this is kind of how the difficulty class uh, examples work. Uh, and you're not always going to have the perfect guide. You're going to have something come up in your story that's not on a list. And you just need to decide as the game master what you think the difficulty of that check is going to be. However, sometimes uh, you're going to come into a situation where Maybe the hero is confronting the villain, and they're going to be in a struggle. And you need to work off of each one of their character sheets in order to determine what the difficulty class is. For example, let's say uh, Batman is trying to punch Joker in the face. We don't, we don't just set that with a DC over here that's going to be based on how well Joker can defend himself. So we'll be taking a look at that pretty soon. Well before we get to the um, Batman versus Joker situation, there's just one final point. As you see uh, after this last point, it's that's it. Those are the essentials. This last point is resistance checks. So maybe when you use a power or you use a skill or something, it needs to be resisted by the other side and that's done with a resistance check. A lot of times what it is is you take whatever your number is and you add 10 to it and that's going to be the difficulty. Uh, if it is damage then let's say let's say you're Batman and you're punching Joker and your strength is 4. Any kind of damage gives you a difficulty class of 15. And Batman would add his strength. So that might be 4 points. So 4 plus 15 is 19. So in order for the Joker to shrug off that attack, he's going to have to roll maybe his toughness and beat that difficulty class of 19. And if he fails, there are some different results he's going to suffer. It could be a bruise, it could uh, stagger him, or it could even incapacitate him if he rolls really poorly. Now, as far as I understand, I, I am not aware of anything in the rule book that, that penalizes you if you roll a 1. However, I did think that there was a section in here that talked about the benefits of rolling a 20. I think even if you really don't have much of a chance to make it or succeed, uh, even if you roll a 20, 
it's going to allow you to succeed. So you kind of have this feeling that the heroes always have a chance, even if it's very small. So when you roll this natural 20, it's a critical success. And so rolling a 20 is always great. It's either going to allow you to succeed when you should normally fail, or it's going to make your success just that much stronger. All right, so here he is, uh, Batman and his character sheet here, all of his statistics and information is in this core book. That is not true of all the other heroes and villains. You'll find those in another set of books, which I'll, I'll show you towards the end of the video. But let's move over to his character sheet. Uh, we see Batman. We see that he is power level 12. So he is two levels higher than your average superhero. So he is uh, special. His strength is a 4, so that means in any kind of strength check, he's going to be rolling a d20 and adding 4 to it. We have these other things, stamina, agility, dexterity, fighting, wow, very nice uh, uh, number there, 14. Intellect is 8, awareness 7, and presence 7. Normally, a lot of characters would have powers listed here, but Batman relies on equipment and his training. So here we have his different equipment. Here's his famous utility belt. And if you are, you know, one of the best parts of these games is creating your own character. It's very fun to create your own superhero or supervillain. And that's done by spending points and all of that is detailed here, how much it costs to have this piece of equipment or how much it costs to have this power. There's a whole guideline there, but that's getting into a higher rank video. That's not a white belt video. So once again, as I said, I, the, the people I play with or have a chance to play with from time to time just don't have the opportunity to go through that process, even though it can be a lot of fun. So I wanted to be able to just give them the Batman character sheet and all the work is already done. We have information down here about his uh, Bat Cave and some of his um, vehicles. And we were talking about Batman's uh, training. Well, that's a lot of that's covered here with his advantages and skills. So Batman has the advantage of being uh, very, very wealthy. He's a, a billionaire. He's also got all kinds of special tactics. He can speak languages. Uh, he is specialized in intimidation. And so going along with that, those advantages sometimes give him a bonus on skill checks. And so here are the standard list of skills. And what you'll see, let's take uh, something like, well, intimidation. We mentioned that one. Uh, his rank in this one is 15 and what we add to that is his score in presence which which is up there at the top is 7 so 7 added to 15 is giving us that final number of 22 so when Batman tries to intimidate someone he just needs to roll the d20 and add 22 to the result that's very impressive uh, Batman is quite uh, intimidating. Moving on down, we have some combat information, and that's when some of these resistance checks are going to be important. Initiative is not really a resistance check. Uh, it's determining who goes first. Sometimes if you can go first in the fight, uh, you know, you may get the the first critical hit and knock them out before they do anything. So. Batman rolls the die, let's say he gets a 10, he's going to add 11, and that's going to be a 21. His opponents will do the same thing. They're going to roll their d20 and add their number. And if his is higher, uh, he's going to act before they do. We have some information on some of his favorite attacks. We have his Batarang here, which is a ranged weapon. And when he attacks, he's going to roll the d20 and add 14 to the result. If he hits, remember it's going to start with an average of 15 on the difficulty class 
and then he's going to add his rank over here which is six so somebody's going to have to save or do a resistance check using their toughness score and try to beat that target number of 21 or let's see 15 plus yep 21 so if he punches you in the face and Batman's got a great chance to do that he's adding 20 to a d20 roll uh, his damage is 4 like we said before so that's going to be a 19 so what kind of target numbers would Batman have to beat well if it's a ranged attack his opponents are going to try to dodge now I don't know if there's a rule for rolling a d20 for your defense the standard is you just take 10 and add it to that number. It's kind of an average on the d20. So let's say somebody's trying to shoot Batman with a pistol. They're going to have their attack score, whatever that is. But the target number, that difficulty class that they have to hit for Batman, is going to be 10 plus this number. So that's going to be 24. They're going to have to roll a 24 or higher to shoot Batman. If they're trying to punch him in the face or kick him in the stomach, they're going to have to beat also a 24. However, he's using now parry. Just imagine that as a hand-to-hand -hand defense. If they're trying to use mind control or something like that, it's probably a will defense. So maybe they're using their mind control power. And we talked about levels of success. If you just get barely over the number, if you're trying to control Batman and, and, and control him like a puppet, maybe if you just barely succeed in beating his will, uh, you might shake him up, daze him, confuse him a little bit. But if you roll really well, it's almost like for every five points you roll over what you needed you have what's basically considered a an additional success so I think if you get two or three success levels against uh, Batman then let's say you let's say you rolled that 20 and got a, a critical success you might just immediately take control of him right there so you kinda don't have to wear him down you just take control of him on the spot fortitude I'm, I'm learning the game but I would imagine maybe that's resisting uh, something like poison perhaps toughness uh, this is the one that's most often used when you're taking damage Batman normally coming from his stamina score which is why it's a four but there's a little uh, star there and it says defensive roll bonus that comes from his I think it's advantages Batman knows how to move his body to avoid damage or lessen the damage he's taking it could be stepping to the side rotating his body uh, rolling with the blow and that's gonna boost his toughness up to eight so someone tries to punch Batman they get over his parry score and they hit him and let's say let's say Batman is punching himself our target number there was a 19 so Batman in order to resist punching himself in the face and shrug off that blow needs to roll the d20 let's just do that now we got a 7 and we would add 8 to it and that's only a 15 so 15 does not beat 19 so he would suffer some negative effect he didn't beat the 19 or, or equal the 19 so let's take a look at a chart that gives us some guidance there alright this is the damage resistance matrix over here is the result of your resistance check and up here is the damage bonus so if Batman were punching himself his damage was four and 
remember that would be added to 15 but this chart kind of already calculates it for you if you want to use this thing so 4 is what his strength is so we go down and we had rolled a 15 on our result and here is a 15 and we result in in a blue so it is a failure but what is a uh, you know if he had rolled into the white he would have shrugged off the blow but what what are the results of a blue it says minus one penalty well think of this as a wound or a bruise or fatigue whatever it is this uh, stacks so every time he's punched and hit and gets this minus one penalty result it it starts adding up so that means in future resistance checks he's going to take penalties to that roll so last time we rolled a seven well if he rolled the same result after being punched again that minus one penalty as you can imagine is going to reduce that result to a six so he's going to get another penalty that's going to be minus two it gives him a greater and greater opportunity to go all the way down and fail his role and get incapacitated so what are the green and the yellow well we have dazed and staggered let's let's talk about those quickly now there is a bit of a learning curve to this game as as there are in most games uh, but I think once you become familiar with the main concepts and come from uh, familiarize your uh, if, if I familiarize myself with some of the main terminology uh, I think it will help in a lot of situations that come up uh, during the game so we need to know what dazed is it's a it's a it's a common thing that's going to happen dazed is a condition and a character is limited to free actions such as speaking and a single standard action so normally you can make a move action and a standard action and then free actions so this is going to slow the character down he can't uh, move and attack anymore he's going to have to choose to either attack or change his standard action over to a move action and just try to move he can't do both so he's getting slowed down the other result that you could get on your resistance check is staggered well you are not only dazed but you're also hindered so we need to familiarize ourselves with hindered and these are in alphabetical order so hindered is right here a character moves at half normal speed immobile supersedes hindered so that's other conditions that you might uh, take on so you might not only be limited to that one action in the round but you're let's say Batman is wounded and trying to find his way out of the sewers uh, he's going to be limping along at half speed so once again he's getting these penalties stacked up on him and he's also really being slowed not only with the number of actions he can take but his actual speed will decrease aha I found something I had missed before like I said I'm in the process of learning the game and sharing this with you along the way there is a critical miss um, it says an attack check and and I, I don't know I may find something else in the rule book that covers skill checks or something but if it's an attack and you roll a one it's always a miss regardless of really whatever your total is so there is a penalty associated with rolling a one so if the 20 is a critical hit a one is a critical miss in combat all right had to step away for a minute but I am back and I had a chance to find a little passage I was looking for about damage resistance checks uh, this was something that I thought I remembered reading and then as I was continuing through the book I had a hard time finding it again but it's right here under damage now there are different parts about combat and defenses and other parts where I was looking for this but this is where it is and it's kinda of something you could overlook 
and basically it means that if you fail your toughness check against damage you get a minus one if you fail and you move into that uh, dazed level I believe it was yellow uh, you're going to get a additional minus one on further checks but something important happens if you get a third degree of success oh, I'm sorry failure you become staggered and you get another minus one and that's when you're moving at half speed and all that if you fail again to this degree in one roll and you get what color was it was it uh, it was yellow yeah yellow is the staggered okay so blue is just the minus one green is the uh, dazed yellow is the staggered if you roll your die and get a yellow result a second time it knocks you into the incapacitated that was just a little rule that um, is I guess in my opinion just a little easy to miss I didn't see it restated again somewhere else but as I said I'm still learning the game and going through the book so just something to keep in mind there and of course if you get the red result you're incapacitated right away so how would this sample roll go if Batman were trying to sock the Joker in the jaw what would what would he need to roll and how well could the Joker handle this attack well here's Batman again let's say he wins the initiative and he moves in for his attack action he's gonna be rolling a plus 20 to his d20 roll in order to try to hit the Joker we need to compare that to the Joker's parry let's take a look at the Joker here he is he's also included in the main rule book which is nice we move over to his character sheet and find all kinds of weirdness as you would expect but here are the defenses we're looking for and his parry is 11 we add to that 10 so his parry defense is 21 21 let's put this in terms of Dungeons and Dragons 21 is basically his armor class Batman is rolling a d20 plus 20 he's just very good at hand-to-hand -hand fighting so let's give this a roll we got a 4 on Batman's roll that's a 24 even though that was a pretty bad roll Batman is so skilled and Bat uh, Joker is just not anywhere near his level of uh, expertise his parry is 21 24 is going to beat that so the Joker gets punched so now Joker needs to do a resistance check and he also has this uh, defensive roll bonus which he can use now so his toughness roll is going to be the d20 plus six Batman has his strength of four so the Joker is going to have to beat 15 plus 4 is 19 he's gonna to have to beat a 19 on his die roll adding 6 to whatever he rolls well he rolled a 4 which is pretty sad uh, this dice seems to be stuck on 4 so let's take a look and we could just calculate this in our head but why don't we use our chart again alright 6 which was the Joker's rank plus 4 is 10 Batman is punching with a damage bonus of four so we cross-reference this and we have a green result this punch basically dazes the Joker which basically takes him down to just one action from uh, for the next round and he has a minus one penalty on any future checks so it was a pretty good uh, blow that's how you do it so in the future when uh, the Joker is making rolls these penalties might start to stack up because as you can see Batman's gonna keep pounding on him he's got a great attack bonus or attack rank to his attack rolls uh, Joker's gonna be 
uh, taken out pretty soon. Just out of my own curiosity, let's say Batman punches him again. We're going to make another roll for the Joker here. The damage that Batman does remains consistent. We're going to keep going down the, the, the four column here. So how does Joker do? He gets his plus six. He rolled a 13 this time for a total of 19, but we have to take one off because of the penalty he suffered before. So that's going to go down to an 18. Well, let's take a look. 18 going over to the fourth rank is a blue, which is just another nice uh, bruise on the Joker's face. So now he's going to be suffering two penalty uh, to future die rolls. So as you can see, he's going to be weakened and weakened and weakened with each punch or kick. Always at risk of being incapacitated with a single blow or being taken out just one or two blows after that by being staggered and perhaps staggered again. So that's kind of how hit, uh, not hit points, but that's kind of how combat works and how you suffer damage. So it doesn't use a pool of hit points. Instead, you just keep making these resistance checks and the penalties uh, stack up. I had sort of in my mind that if I played this and was trying to keep track of these penalties, I might uh, use some little uh, game chips, almost like poker chips that I have, and I actually have these exact colors. So I thought I might start handing some of those out, um, and that way if they had you know three blue chips in front of them, uh, they would know that on their resistance checks they're going to get minus three to their roll. Anyway, just you can handle it the way you want to, but that was something I was considering. Well, I think that's going to bring me to the end here of this uh, white belt video. I thought maybe in the future I could talk a little bit about Superman and maybe compare Superman to Batman, since that was uh, the thing that happened in the recent movie. We might even take a look at Wonder Woman. All of those characters are in the main book. Uh, I don't know if Doomsday is in here. Uh, these are alphabetical order. The villains are colored red. There is Dark Side, but uh, no Doomsday. To get Doomsday, we have to go to another book. And we have these volumes. This is volume two. And uh, this is volume one. This is basically going to give at least as far as I know about every DC hero and villain you can think of. And uh, the characters are already written out with their backgrounds and complications and all their skills and powers. And it's in alphabetical order. So although this is covered with heroes here, uh, this these books do contain both uh, villains and heroes. So just to prove that point, let's let's find Doomsday. Uh, we're going in alphabetical here. We're in the C's. We're in the D's. Doomsday. Doomsday. We're in the Doctors. Here's Doomsday. Uh, Batman was a power level 12. And we can see up here Doomsday is a 16. And his strength is uh, 20. Batman was a 4. So remember it can go up to 20. Doomsday, as you can imagine, is a 20. So we'll take some more of a look at that later, maybe at a higher rank video, not a white belt video, and maybe go through some specifics on the character sheets and how some of these different skills and, and powers and advantages uh, can work. Finally, there is one more book in this series that I'm aware of, and I do have it. Uh, it's called DC Adventures Universe. So I think if you want additional information, and I've, I've hardly even cracked this one open yet. I'm still going through the main book. But I think this gives you kind of the setting information. So if you want to tell your stories and be sort of consistent with what's in the comics, uh, you want to find out more about Gotham City or Metropolis, I think you can find that uh, in here. So there we have it. A nice introduction to... Uh, DC Adventures, basically Mutants and Masterminds 3rd Edition. 
And I hope you'll join me again as uh, we take a little deeper look at some things in the future. So some more gaming of all different types coming up on the channel. Uh, appreciate you watching everybody. Take care and I'll catch you later.